unwinding. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. And be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. That the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. All right, well, if that got our energy going a little, let's please stand up for our opening song. We are all friends here. We are all friends here. There are no strangers once you walk inside that door. Welcome. We welcome you to linger in this family of love and hold you in our hearts the way you are. We are. church in Reading, we'd like to do our congregational blessing. Yes. Let's hold up our hands and bless each other, and we bless you online as well. We, we love you. We, we bless you. We appreciate you. you and, and we behold the Christ in you. Mm, thank you, Laura and Anton. Wasn't that a great bunch of little introductory songs that they did this morning? It was perfect. You know, when I hear songs like Where Have All the Flowers Gone, it takes me back to the late 60s, the 70s, and I remember wearing peasant dresses, which I loved, and sitting in parks and listening to music. Thank you so much. It was great. So with that kind of music, it seems like the kind of morning to do a different kind of prayer. You know, we have a worship team now that meets once a month, and um, they bring suggestions, and we evaluate our services. And one of the persons on the worship team recently said, you know, one time when we were down at the other place, Reverend Sandra used to do a morning prayer that was interactive, and I think that would be fun to do sometimes. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I can't do that. That is so not me. But I've been practicing. And so I'm thinking, okay, so this morning, let's do an interactive prayer and see how it goes. And so we're going to say, good morning, God. Good morning, God. This is the day that you have made. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And here we are together worshiping. Here we are together worshiping. With open minds. With open minds. With open hearts. With open hearts. And with love for all. And with love for all. And so it is. And so it is. Hey, I could do it. <laughs> Oh, and welcome to all of you who are joining us from afar. We hope you participated in our morning prayer this morning. So, Laura, would you please light our Christ candle for us? Thank you. And with Laura, let us say, we light this candle to remind us that the light of God lives within each one of us. And let us say together, I am the light of Christ. And now let's join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is everywhere present, wholeness is your name. Your kingdom is come. Your will is being done in earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day and every day our daily bread, and you forgive us as we forgive. You leave us not in temptation, for you deliver us from error. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, Reverend Ken. All right. Well, we're going to begin with our uh, affirmation for this day, and it's for the... It's on? And it's working great. We hold that for ourselves. Well, we're going to begin with uh, this week's affirmation from uh, Silent Unity, and we're going to hold that in our vision. So, if you'd like to relax and think about that, I hold the world in a vision of harmony and peace. I am one with the world around me. Every man is my brother every woman, my sister. We are one in God. In a state of oneness, I imagine holding hands, embracing arms, walking together on earth. I hold this image in love with the world as I pray. And our affirmation for this particular week is, I hold the world in a vision of harmony and peace. Let's all join in that. I hold the world in a vision of harmony and peace. And now for our uh, consciousness statement, and let's all say this together also. Thine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanding prosperity, attendance, and by being a light on the path for others. And we are so blessed. Our daily word for the day is for inner peace. And the affirmation is, peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. And let's say that together. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. And the daily word reads, inner peace, the peace of God that my words can only begin to describe does not depend on outer circumstances. Peace does not come from any external source. It arises from within me. At a place in consciousness sometimes called at the center of my being, like all qualities of God, waits for me to recognize and claim it. I claim inner peace when I remember the truth that God's presence is always with me. It's always 
within me. As I center my awareness in the divine presence within, peace soothes my feelings and restores order to my thoughts. I move through all circumstances with calm assurance. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Every event of my day contributes to the calm peace of my soul. And from Isaiah 26, 3, those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. The word for the day is inner peace. The affirmation, peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. And now we're going to go into our meditation music for meditation. Let's do the joy, let's do the joy song. <laughs> I'm just thank reading, you, uh, reading this little thing here. I, thank you, Anton. Let's do a joy song before I get rid of all the music. <laughs> For our joy song today, we're going to do Amazing Grace, and we'll repeat at the end. We'll repeat the first verse. I don't think we warned the the slide person about that. a little out of order today so we're just gonna now with that nice positive energy go into a little meditation music and then our meditation I am
as we open, open to that divine that lives within each and every one of us. We've come here today to open to mercy, open our hearts and our lives, share whatever it is within you, because we never know how much it will help someone else. So as we come here in this time for meditation, to sit and listen to whatever it is that we need to hear, hear through our hearts that divine voice that lives within us. So as we go into the silence here and now, with gratitude and love in our hearts, we take that deep breath. Feel the chair beneath you, holding you as if God was holding you, right here and now. So enjoy as you've taken another deep breath. Drop those shoulders, relax into that chair, and just go into the silence. Now, as we come back into this room, we come back bringing that light and love. We come back with the joy of whatever it was we were told, whatever answers that you received today. We give thanks. And we would like to share that with those in the prayer box, with our family and friends. So if you'll join me now, right here, and bring up each and every name that you can think of that would like to live in that same love and light. So join me by speaking their names.
And I'd like to add, everyone here in this community. So if you'll join me by confirming this with speaking your name aloud. Confirm it, please, with me now. Kathy. So through the prayers that have been lifted here today, we give thanks and gratitude. And through those powers that always dwells within everyone, everyone in this whole world, we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. We're going to do an, a new original song for you this morning, which means that we wrote it within the last couple weeks. <laughs> talent. We love and appreciate you. I am going to begin by telling you a story this morning. It's an old story that I've just sort of made modern, modern a little bit. 
And it's a story with a point. There were two children, Sally and Tommy, and they were city kids. And they'd been invi invited to spend the summer with their grandparents on a ranch. Maybe it was in the Midwest someplace. Maybe it was in Northern California. I don't know where it was. But when the children got to their grandparents' house, Tommy was just old enough that his grandpa said, you know, Tommy, you are old enough now to have a BB gun, and I am going to teach you to use it. So he did. And one morning, Tommy went out, and he set the cans up out in the field, and he took his BB gun, and he shot, and he shot, and he didn't hit one mark. And so he was sort of dejectedly walking back into the yard, and he just took his gun and randomly shot it. And wouldn't you know, it hit his grandmother's favorite duck, and the duck died. Now, after I chose this story, Anton, I thought about you, because two weeks ago when Anton and Laura were here, I brought up cannibalism. And after the talk, Anton said, I wonder where you were going with this. So today I bring up a dead duck, and I can hear Anton saying, where will she go with that? So Tommy was so distraught about what he had done that he quickly took the duck and hid it behind the gardening shed. And he was walking back into the main part of the yard, and who should be there with a smirk on her face but his older sister? So later in the day, the grandmother said to the older sister, Sally, Sally, I'd like you to go to the grocery store with me. We have to choose some food for dinner, and I'd like you to help with that. And Sally said, oh, you know, earlier Tommy and I were talking about it, and Tommy said he'd love to go to the grocery store with you. And she looked at Tommy and mouthed, remember the duck. <laughs> that evening, after dinner, Grandma said, Sally, if you would just help me clear the table and wash the dishes, I would love that. And Sally said, you know, at home Tommy always does that. I know he'd like to help you, too. And she looked at Tommy and mouthed, remember the duck. Well, this went on for a few days, and Tommy got so sick of having to do his sister's work that he thought, you know, I've just got to gather it together and go and tell Grandma. So he went into the kitchen, and he said to Grandma the other day, and he told the story. And his grandmother said, I know. I was standing at the kitchen window, and I saw the whole thing. And I was wondering how long you would become the slave of your sister. <laughs> there is a point to that story, a point to why we're using that story this morning. Because it's a story about mercy. That grandmother had mercy for her grandson. She could feel the angst that he had for shooting the duck. And also what he was carrying that his sister was taunting him about this really bad mistake that he had made. She had showed mercy. And part of that mercy was showing compassion. So compassion is a part of mercy, but it's not all of mercy. And I think that mercy is one of those words that we hear, that we may in fact use sometimes, but do we actually know what it means? It's not a very modern word. And what does this word mercy mean? There is a modern translation of a Bible called the message, the Bible in contemporary language. And a man named Eugene H. Peterson took over a decade with his research team to work with the, um, the Hebrew and the Greek texts to bring them into language of modern day English. He had been a pastor, he was a pastor while he was doing this, and regardless of which translation of the Bible he used, he could see that sometimes the words just didn't quite mesh with his congregation. And so in this Bible, what he did was he used English that's used today even including some slang that young people might understand, 
but which still had the same meanings of the Greek and Hebrew texts. And this is the way that this Bible talks about the fifth beatitude that Jesus gave on his Sermon on the Mount. We have learned that as being blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. This is how the translation goes in the message. You are blessed when you care. At the moment, you are full of being careful. You find yourselves cared for. Now, I cannot tell you what the word for mercy in the Greek Bible was. Anton, you probably know. But, but one of the translations of that is care. So when we care, when we are filled with care, we are cared for. In a sense, this beatitude sounds a little bit like give and it will be given to you. But it's a little bit different from that because it's, it is more. And so let's talk a little bit about that more this morning. One of the things that I like about this translation is that it shows that mercy is not just something that we feel, but it requires an action. And when I am at my highest and when I'm at my best, if I feel compassion for someone, if I'm feeling now what I might call merciful, if I'm feeling filled with love, I do something about it. I act on it. And I feel something in return. I feel my inner spirit saying, good, Carolyn. You had a feeling, and you did something with that feeling. You served someone. You acted on the compassion that you were feeling. When I don't do that, when I just have a thought, or maybe a glimpse of a feeling, and I don't act on it, I'm somewhat like the Pharisees of Jesus' day. The Pharisees were those religious leaders in the temple of Jerusalem, and they espoused the word of God, and they did it very loudly. They were also the judges of the time, and their reputation was not being one of being filled with compassion and being care-filled. They had the reputation of being not compassionate, of not understanding, of not being caring of the people. They spoke the word of God, but it was words only. And if I use my words without any follow-up, I am being no better than the Pharisees. I must have the feeling and then do something with it so somebody else knows and somebody else receives. The story in the Bible that all of us here this morning know, but I'm going to share with you again anyway, because it probably speaks the most strongly of mercy, of all of the familiar stories that we have. And it is the story of the Good Samaritan. And the prelude to the story of the Good Samaritan is Jesus is talking to a group of people that are around him, and a, lawyer, uh, and, and a lawyer stood up because Jesus had said, um, love your neighbor as yourself. And almost trying to catch Jesus, the lawyer said, well, who is my neighbor? And this is the story that Jesus told. It comes from Luke. Jesus said, a man was going down to Jerusalem, to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and who beat him and away, went away leaving him for half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed to the other side. 
So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him and passed to the other side. Now we can remember that the priests and the Levites were the people of God, the people of the Jerusalem temple. But a Samaritan, while traveling near this man, and the Samaritans hated the Jews, there was great conflict. And a Samaritan passed by this man. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Well, this lawyer in the group who was trying to justify himself then said, So, who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, Who would you say that the good neighbor was? And of course we know what the man said. It was the Samaritan. So, when the lawyer said, it was the Samaritan who served. Jesus said, go and do likewise. He said, bring that feeling of compassion or pity that you have and act on it. Don't just feel it. Don't just look and maybe have compassion, but walk on the other side of the road because it's somebody that you don't care for or it's somebody that is a different belief of yours or that they're dirty or unclean or whatever. Act on your compassion. In the story about the duck, we can guess that the grandmother forgave Tommy the story doesn't say this, but when she said, I wondered how long you were going to let your sister make you her slave. What I heard her saying is, all is forgiven. That is done with. Move on. So mercy not only has compassion in it, but mercy has an element of forgiveness. And we know that when we forgive, we too are forgiven. It is a reciprocal thing. Our hymn that we had this morning, Amazing Grace, was perfect for today's talk because grace is also a part of mercy. John Newton is the person who wrote the words to Amazing Grace. And John Newton had been a slave trader, and he was very unkind. He was one of the worst of the worst in terms of the way he treated his cargo of slaves. And one time, his ship was off the coast of Ireland, and a huge storm came, and it was battering the ship, and it looked like the, the ship might not be saved. And John went up onto the deck and he said, God, have mercy on me. Now, he was not a man of God. He had no particular religious upbringing and no particular religious beliefs. The story goes that in that moment, John received the words to amazing grace. That is a myth. It's a beautiful story, but it's a myth. That's not how it happened. Those words came quite later. But what did happen was that night, John converted to Christianity. He felt God's mercy, God's love, God's compassion coming down on him. And it resulted in him becoming a man of God and going into, I believe he went into a monastery, and he wrote the words to amazing grace. Grace is God's love that is poured down on us constantly, that rises within us constantly. It is freely given. It is always there. God never, ever withholds love, no matter who we are or what we've done. 
But we do not feel that love unless we can open our hearts to us. Mercy is God's compassion. And God's compassion, his feeling, his feeling for our suffering, his feeling for the injuries that we felt, this mercy of God is always available to us too. But we have to open. As we are merciful, we obtain mercy. We receive the mercy that is always there for us. In many of the stories of Jesus' healing, the first thing that happens is someone reaches out and says to Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And sometimes Jesus touched the person, sometimes he just looked at them, and a healing took place. So sometimes we have to ask for mercy, like John did, like some of the people in the stories of Jesus did. And when we ask for mercy and when we open ourselves to us, to it, it is freely given. It is right there for us. All the compassion, all the caring that we could long for. And when we give mercy, when we give compassion, when we give forgiveness, when we hold others in grace, it is right there for us too. Because we cannot give what we don't have. And so when we're able to reach within and find that place in us that has the ability to feel with another, to feel for another in their time of misery, in their time of need, then we can authentically offer mercy. We can offer love. We can offer compassion. And we can do it not only from that feeling, but from following through with some kind of an act. Perhaps someone shares their story and it does touch my heart and I do feel compassion. I can just look into their eyes with love because we know that love comes through our eyes. Or we can touch them on the shoulder. Or we can offer a smile. Or if appropriate, we can give a hug. If it's somebody that needs something more physical, if in integrity we can do it, for example, perhaps someone needs a ride to an appointment, and we can ask, would you like me to take you? That is being filled with mercy. If we see someone that we cannot help, like for example, if we're driving through town, and we see someone on the street, a homeless person who we know is filled with mental illness, is suffering with his or her own demons. Perhaps we don't stop. Perhaps we know there is nothing that we can physically do for this person. But when that feeling of compassion arises in us, when we have mercy for his or her condition, we can offer a prayer. Maybe not in that moment when we're driving, but when we get home, bringing this person to mind and offering a prayer for them. When we are filled with compassion, when we're filled with forgiveness, when we are filled with that feeling of grace that is bestowed on us, and we can offer these things to another, we are blessed with mercy and we receive mercy in return so this week when you're thinking about mercy i hope that with me you will think about the words that you use are they empty words oh i hear what you're saying and i really care or i feel for you are they words like the pharisees would use the words might be right, but if the feeling is not in our heart and we can't follow through, it's an empty kind of mercy, isn't it? So as we listen to our words and we watch our actions, 
we begin to get a barometer of where we are. And when we can combine the feelings that we have with actions that we offer, we are coming from our highest, most spiritual selves that we all are. And we can feel that mercy that has risen within us and that we have given. And we can say, thank you, God. Thank you for showing me mercy. Thank you for showing me compassion so that I could reach that place within me and give it to another. I know you will be doing that this week, just as I too will be doing that, because we are all of us working the practices together. So have a beautiful week. I hold you in my love and in my heart, and I pray for you each morning. So bless you, bless you, and thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. You've uh, given us something to think about all week and to act upon. Thank you very much. And now as the ushers come forward, we know that it is the time of our offertory, and we know that we give of our time, our talents, and our treasure. So let us hold our treasure in our hands and let's bless it together. Divine, Divine love. love. Through, through me, blesses and, and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am blessed.
Tu tare tu re sol ha, om tare tare. Tu tare tu re sol ha. Thank you. That is such a beautiful chant. Mother, Father, God, we are so grateful for all the gifts that are given to Unity Church in Reading. The gifts of time, the gifts of talent, and the gifts of treasure. And this morning we accept gratefully the gifts of treasure that has been given, have been given with open, generous hearts knowing that they will serve our community and beyond. My heart is filled with love and gratitude as I say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. So now it's time for our announcements. The church office will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, and for the first time in two weeks, both Ken and I will be here. So this is going to be lovely. Uh, as you know, we offer prayer before and after service, and this, um, Kathy is our prayer chaplain today. She'll be back here. So if you would like prayer, please go to Kathy, and if she's busy, Ken and I are both here also. We have our noon meditation, which meets in the sanctuary, and we are still doing it by call-in. So if you are interested in having meditation but just can't get here, the call-in numbers are on the wall in the, in the um, entry area, uh, or I can give you that number. Our spring tea is on June 19th, and as you know, this is going to be, I know Mrs. I know Miss Aletha, I see you back there. <laughs> I know you do, and you're going to have your chance. Uh, the tea is going to be on the 19th, and after I finish the announcements, I will let Aletha come up and do her speaking about the tea. Um, our group meetings this week are A Course in Love, which meets on um, Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock with Reverend Ken, and A Course in Miracles meets on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, please check the board in the hallway if you're interested in any of the AA meetings this week, the, any of the 12-step programs. On Friday of this week, we are having an all-day board retreat. If there's anything that you would like to bring up to the board that you would like us to, to discuss or consider at our meeting on Friday, please see me or see Ken, see Kay or Kathy. Um, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, Alitha, would you like to talk about the tea? I would love to talk about the tea. Boy, it's been a while since I've been here, you guys. It's been a long year. I hope everybody's doing great. I'm going to stand here next to Carolyn and hold her hand for a second. We're having a tea. Hashtag tea party. <laughs> It's always been a very great, fun time. Uh, Connie really loves the tea party. <laughs> I love the tea party. And we want everybody to come and have some fun. And we're going to follow protocols, of course, for the COVID thing, if it's still rampaging through the aisles of wherever we're at. Anyway. Ken, Ken, Ken's going to be a server. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that, I'm kind of teasing. We're going to have a lot of good stuff to auction, a lot of good stuff to raffle. We're going to have a kid's corner. We're going to have all kinds of new kind of stuff because of what's been going on for the last year. And we need to get out and be joyful and have some fun and know that we are filled with mercy and grace from Father, Mother, Goddess, God, source of all source. That is true. And I love you all, and I've missed you. And as you can see, I've gotten gray over the year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, and happy, happy Memorial Day. And 
Thank you, Aletha. Um, she talked about the fun parts. Now I will talk about the business parts. We are closing sign-ups for the tea, and the sign-up sheet is out in the, um, on the little table in the library area. Sign-ups will close on June 10th. So if you're interested, please have your name down because we need to provide for tables and all the wonderful things. Um, if you are interested in donating things for the raffle or the auction, please take them to the uh, children's room no later than June 13th because Nancy and Aletha and I think several others, Connie and I think Kathy, are working um, to make beautiful baskets and to put things out in a lovely way for us. The cost of the tea for adults is $15, and if you are bringing a child, and we have a lot of children signed up out there, it's $8. So that is what it is. I and we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Thank you for being here today. I understand it's to be a swelteringly hot week this week. So stay cool, be happy, and be filled with mercy. Let's stand for our peace song. that don't we <laughs> thank you now our prayer for protection and Aletha this is a surprise for you because we do it in a new way now so together the light of God surrounds us we are the light of God the love of God enfolds us we are the love of God the power of God protects us we embrace that power the peace of God watches over us. We live our lives in God's presence. Wherever we are, God, God is. is. And so it is. I'm sorry, I was so into Diana, and are we hearing her okay, that I just lost my place. So here we are. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you.